Joining me now to talk more about the tragedy unfolding in Kenya is Ni Akwete. He's the former executive director of Africa Action and a member of the Trans-Africa Forum's Scholars Council. Ni, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be what back. What we do know right now is that Al-Shabaab has claimed responsibility for the attack. What do we know about this group? Well, they, they are a Somali group. I mean, their name uh, emphasizes the youth. They were formed to oppose a uh, previous um, um, puppet government put together by the international community. They believe in Islamic rule, but the, uh, um, the inter um, internal courts union, which split up. And um, the bigger part of it is forms the current government, but the renegade part is what uh, called itself al-Shabaab, and they have made uh, official links with um, al-Qaeda, and they've been fighting the international group that are trying to protect the current government. They, they go back uh, five, six years. So what we're seeing now is a power struggle in Somalia that's crossed over the border into Kenya. Uh, why is al-Shabaab targeting Kenya? They are targeting Kenya for, I think, uh, two reasons. Number one, you know, they actually they've been pushed back because a couple of years ago they were controlling Mogadishu and a bigger area. Now the international force, AMISOM, which mainly contains Kenyans and Ugandans and Ethiopians, have pushed them back. So that is one reason. But the other reason is that Kenya came in chasing them in hot pursuit because two years ago they moved into Kenya into some of the tourist areas and kidnapped Western tourists. And so Kenya then followed in and then it was woven into the international group, internationally supported African group that now has uh, a Shabab on the run. And as we heard from the report, they now say they want to take the fight out of not just in Somalia but into the rest of the region. And that, to me that is predictable. You say predictable, but what do we know about how they operate? I mean, here they targeted a shopping mall, yeah. civilians, the softest of soft targets, uh, most people, of course, unarmed, defenseless. Yes. Um, were there any indications that they would go this way? No, I think this is very difficult. So I, I guess I should be a little more nuanced about predictable. The predict predictability is that we knew they were going to hit back, but they go out of their way. I mean, all these uh, asymmetrical warriors go out of their way to hit soft targets, to hit when they you least expect it. So I think that Kenya, Uganda, Uganda was hit during the last World Cup. And so I think they and the international backers knew that they will be hit. They didn't know when and where. And I, I heard, um, you know, the U.S. Um, uh, embassy in Nairobi have come out and said they are extending all their help. And that confirms what I, I expected, that there will be a lot of uh, communication between Washington and Nairobi, even though there's been some coolness between Mr. Obama and Mr. Kenyatta because of the ICC case and the elections. But they will put that aside and focus on how to deal with these terrorists. I remember the attack on Uganda during the World Cup. It was on a bar uh, yes. while a match yes. was taking place. Yes. Uh, was Kenya unprepared for this? I'd, it is very hard to be prepared. You know, I mean, you never know where they are going to hit. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm sympathetic about the challenge that the Kenyan authorities face. I'm sure they were prepared for something, but you don't know exactly when. I mean, being in Washington, it is clear. I mean, the U.S. is always on the alert about itself being hit, but it, they have all kinds of resources, and it's hard for them pr to predict. The only way you can predict, really, is if you infiltrate the group and you are part of, the, you know what the plans are. And I don't think Kenya has those kinds of sophisticated resources. So I will say they were prepared, but nobody should expect a preparation that is 100% effective and prevents everything. Very quickly, Ni, does this now send a message to other countries in that coalition opposing al-Shabaab, countries like Ethiopia and Uganda, that you could be targets to? I think so. But I, and I think they've been expecting something like this, so I expect them to ramp up their, their vigilance. Ni Akwete, thanks for joining us. My pleasure.